Also, um, for those of you who keep track of these things, it was actually kind of a surprise to us. We are, we are right now on the brink of our 15th anniversary of Stand to Reason. It was 15 years ago, May 1st, that at Hope Chapel in Hermosa Beach, uh, I gathered publicly. I'd already gathered with some, privately with uh, some friends to talk about this idea some weeks before. But publicly, I gathered, and the enforcer, Melinda Penner, was there as one of our, uh, as the other founder of this organization. And we talked to folks who were um, uh, familiar with what I do and who I was and had an interest in uh, what God was doing in my life and were close friends. Uh, and uh, there were about uh, around 50 people that showed up on uh, May 1st. Uh, in the Ocean View Room at Hope Chapel in Hermosa Beach, and I basically laid out the idea of Stand a Reason for them. We had, hadn't even developed the ambassador part at that point, but we we knew we, we we had our you know we had our hands on something important and significant. And we we had some ideas about uh, how we wanted to make a contribution, and so I ran that by those folks, and I asked them two questions. I said, uh, first. Um, what do you think of the idea? I want you to write it on a piece of paper, I or nay. I, I, is it thumbs up or thumbs down? I kind of want your counsel. I want to know what you think, you people that are closer to me and have followed what the Lord's been doing in my own life. And the second question is, if it's a thumbs up, how much money are you willing to put on the table right now to help us get launched? And uh, we had, I don't know, virtually unanimous thumbs up on that particular issue. And uh, there were a lot of people who stepped up to the plate. And uh, as founders, laid some cash on the table and got us going with legal work. And Hope Chapel, of course, was tremendous in giving us a place to work out of for the first few years. And that was the genesis, the birthplace of Stand a Reason. And for those of you who are part of that in the early days, I thank you. And I'm glad 15 years later, we're still on board. Uh, my radio um, career goes back just a bit before that, when Crawford Broadcasting hired me in 1990. But it really was, um, a, a, you know, an act of God in a certain way because I was like nobody. I had no experience. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, sometimes I think that's still the case. But here now, 18 years later, I'm still on board. But that kind of gave us some momentum, so that four years uh, later, uh, 1993. Uh, three and a half years later, we were we, we, we were moving forward, and uh, we I had some name recognition, and and I I knew more people now as a result of uh, interviewing them, and and this was one of the stepping stones that God used. So um, thrilled to be able to announce our fifteenth anniversary coming up this next week. Um, very quickly before I get to your calls, and I'm glad you're lining up uh, to chat with me here this first hour. Uh, I wanted to let you know that I'd seen the movie Expelled. And it was open last week, uh, and it was a, a great response. I mean, some of the theaters were completely packed, and uh, I, I was glad to hear that. Um, ours wasn't, but I think it was Sunday night when I went to see the, the movie with my wife after the show um, last week. Uh, let me give you my response. First of all, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's worth seeing, and it's worth taking someone to. I think it's worth seeing if you already have convictions because probably nothing about the film will bother you and much will inform you and quite a bit will entertain you. I mean, it's Ben Stein after all. Remember the guy from Ferris Bueller's Day Off? He was the teacher, the deadpan teacher who was asking questions to a completely uninterested class. Anybody? 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 That's the guy. In fact, he actually ends his documentary... <laughs> Uh, with the same line, but applied in a kind of unique way. So he's kind of a deadpan, kind of comedic, tongue-in-cheek, do you take him entirely seriously, not so sure kind of guy. And so you get this documentary has that feel to it. It's, it's not your ordinary documentary. And it makes very, very uh, rich use of old file footage of just about everything you can imagine from the mid to uh, the early to mid part of the, uh, the 20th century. So you have all this black and white footage, and some of it's meant for dramatic effect, and some of it's meant to be comical. And so if you are already convinced on this issue... Uh, you will be informed about, I think, a very, very real problem in the academy where people are actually being punished uh, for even considering the possibility of intelligent design. And there's a lot, a lot of documentation that's been given, that is given um, in this movie, and um, this is just the tip of the iceberg because I happen to have known for years that this is going on, and I'm glad that this has given some visibility. So the big 
big push, at least initially, is about uh, freedom of thinking and freedom of the academy and freedom of speech. And that there should never be a closed door on any item, any issue. That it ought to always be open for discussion if there is relevant data to support it. All right? And that's kind of the point that's being made. And you'll enjoy it if you kind of share his general convictions and you'll get an education. Now, if you don't enjoy Stein's convictions, if you are are not interested in intelligent design, in fact, if you're dead set against it, I I actually doubt that there is much in the movie that you'll, uh, you'll like. Because even the evidence that I think is very powerful, that people's academic freedoms, their legitimate academic freedoms are being infringed, um, I think that the dyed-in-the-wool dyed um, atheist uh, Darwinist types are just going to say, well, so what? Uh, we don't give liberty to talk about, uh, for people to talk about the Easter Bunny of fairies or dragons and things like that either. And they summarily put the entire ele- intelligent design issue into that category. And so I don't, I don't think they're going to waste their time, which is probably the way they'd think about it, by going to see this movie. I don't think it is a waste of time, and I think a person that's somewhere in the middle who is, who is, uh, who is reasonable about this and open-minded and willing to listen to both sides of the discussion, and indeed you get both sides, and part of what you see is the statements from the other side. People like Christopher uh, Hitchens and Richard Dawkins and um, uh, 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 um, Michael Roos, the philosopher. I mean, these people make statements that really clearly support the point is being made, and they're from the other side. 